Hi everyone, this is Maverick Paul, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2021 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 22. Now 22, the structure of N-methyl betaine amine is shown. Which statements can be used to explain why an aqueous solution of N-methyl ethane amine has no effect on red litmus? No effect on red litmus means that this guy is neutral. And there are three statements here that we want to run through. Statement number one, delocalization of the lone pair of electrons on your nitrogen atom over the C double bond O group results in the nitrogen becoming less available for protonation. Number two, delocalization of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom over the C double bond O group strengthens the carbon nitrogen bond. And number three, N methyl ethane amide is more stable than the ion that forms when it is protonated. And we want to run through the options A, B, C, D, C, which is my best answer. Now, the topic tested in this exercise again is under nitrogen compound. And as mentioned previously, if the question mentions that amide has no effect on red limus, this means that your amide is neutral. The nitrogen will not donate the lone pair at all. And let us try to understand why this is the case. Now, actually, the lone pair on your nitrogen is delocalized into your C double bond O group or your acid group. We can actually draw the resonance structures of your amine to see that the lone pair can be delocalized into your acid group. So if I look at the structure on the left-hand side, there's a lone pair on your nitrogen. So what this lone pair can do is it can draw an arrow from the lone pair on your nitrogen and then form a double bond between your carbon and your nitrogen. Then it forms a C double bond N open up the pi bond between your carbon and your oxygen, both electrons go to O, so double bond becomes single bond between your carbon and your oxygen, electrons go to oxygen, oxygen becomes negatively charged. So this means that the lone pair on your nitrogen can be delocalized and it goes to your oxygen. But it doesn't stay there, it can come back down, draw an arrow from the lone pair, point back to between your carbon and your oxygen to form back the C double bond O, and we can open up the double bond between your carbon and your nitrogen, point to your N plus, and the electron will go back to our nitrogen, lone pair will go back to our nitrogen. So we have our resonance structures involving your amine, showing where the lone pair is. Now, on the structure on the left-hand side, the lone pair is on nitrogen, but we've already mentioned that it actually doesn't stay there, you know, it can actually get delocalized, go into oxygen. But if you look at the structure on the right-hand side, the lone pair is on oxygen, but it doesn't stay there, you know, actually it can come down, it can go back to nitrogen. So where exactly is your lone pair in your amine? It is not on nitrogen, it is not on oxygen, somewhere in between. It is delocalized and it is spread out very, very well between oxygen, carbon, and our nitrogen. Now we can use this diagram to show that the lone pair is being delocalized very, very well between nitrogen, carbon, and oxygen. This curve will represent the delocalization of your lone pair. So the concept is the lone pair on your nitrogen is delocalized extensively very very well between electronegative nitrogen and oxygen because on both ends nitrogen loves electrons very much. I want to pull the lone pair as close to me as possible. On the other end oxygen also loves the electron very very much. You pull the lone pair as close to itself as possible. As a result the lone pair is actually spread out very, very well, delocalized extensively between oxygen and nitrogen. And this is our resonance stability because of the delocalization of your pi electrons and species that are stabilized by resonance, they will be stabilized to a very significant extent. Your amine will not use the lone pair for donation because once it uses the lone pair on your nitrogen for donation, it's gonna lose this resonance stability, which it doesn't want. It wants to keep this resonance stability. Therefore, amides are neutral. Amide will not use the lone pair on your nitrogen for donation. Okay, so now we know why amides are neutral. We can run through the statements number one, number two, number three, and see which one explains why amides are neutral. So statement number one, delocalization of the lone pair of your electrons on the nitrogen over the C double bond O group results in nitrogen becoming less available for protonation. So this is true because this is effectively what we have talked about previously. There's a delocalization of the lone pair on nitrogen into the acid group and it is a very good delocalization. So the lone pair on your nitrogen will not be available for donation. It doesn't undergo protonation, doesn't accept H+. 
This will explain why amides are neutral. So number one is true. Number one will be part of the answer. How about statement number two? Delocalization of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen over the C double bond O group strengthens the carbon nitrogen bond. Now we know that there's delocalization, and this is an extensive delocalization. We know that your C N bond, which is part of this region that has this delocalized pi system, we know that this C N bond is stabilized by resonance. So will it strengthen the C N bond? Yes, this is true. But you notice when we consider protonation or when your amide functions as a base or when the nitrogen donates the lone pair, it doesn't involve the breaking of your CN bond if it is an acid base reaction. So even if it is true, it is not applicable or it's not relevant. It doesn't explain why amides are neutral. So number two is interesting. Number two is true, but it doesn't mean that if the statement is true, it must be relevant. It is true but not relevant because during acid base reaction, we're not breaking the CN bond. So whether the CN bond is stronger or weaker, it doesn't really affect uh, whether your nitrogen will donate its lone pair or not. So statement number two, it doesn't explain why amides are neutral. So we will reject statement number two. Now how about statement number three? Statement number three talks about comparing the stability involving your n methyl ethane amine versus the product that is being formed when it undergoes protonation. So let us try to write out this dissociation. Now if your amine were to accept a proton, Right, if it is a proton acceptor, then the dissociation should be something like this. This should be the conjugate acid involving this weak base. If it might were a weak base, then this should be the counter ion or the conjugate acid that is formed. As mentioned, if I compare the two guys, if I consider it might, it might the lone pair on your nitrogen can be delocalized into your acid group. This guy will be stabilized by resonance, so this will be stable. If the nitrogen uses the lone pair for protonation, when it forms this species here, the conjugate acid version, then the lone pair on your nitrogen will not be delocalized into the acid group. You lose this resonance stability. So this guy will be less stable than the reactant. And if you compare stability-wise, since the reactant is more stable, the system actually favors the formation of the species that is more stable. So we would expect the position of the equilibrium actually to lie towards the left-hand side. I want to form the species that is more stable. I don't want to form the species that is less stable. So since resonance stabilized amine, significantly more stable than the product, which doesn't have resonance stability. So the position of equilibrium will lie very much towards the left-hand side. And this means that your amide, the reactant, will not accept proton to form the product. So this will also help to explain why amides are neutral. So this statement, number three, will also help to explain why amides are neutral. And therefore, statement number three will be part of the answer. So statement number three is true. Now, we have run through the options number one, number two, number three. We know that statement number one is helping us to explain why amides are neutral. Number two is true, but it's not relevant. So we will reject that. Number three, it is relevant. So the answer to this question will be option A, statements one and three are correct. Okay, so that was the discussion involving question 22. If you have learned something useful from this video, please give me the thumbs up, like this video, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons. That's all for now. I'll see you next week.